Now each of these mains powered controllers behind me operate 24 volt AC solenoid valves. Now these solenoid valves um, have the advantage of being remote from the controller so they can be up to 100 meters away uh, and maybe more. Now the beauty of the solenoid valves is that they're very easy to assemble and very easy to wire. I'm going to show you that in a moment. We do manifold fittings here or little manifold assemblies. There's a two and there's a, a four and a three way. Um, so very simple. They've got an internal seal. The end stop is usually just capped off like so and that's your entry into there so any anything to one inch BSP male uh, can go into there 25 mil 32 mil whatever your supply pipe size is and then the, these hunter valves have a one inch male both sides so all you do is you simply screw them together like so making sure you've got the solenoid valve the right way around, obviously. And there, very simply, we have a two valve assembly. So our inlet is here, that's our drain port point or our stop end, and those are our valve outlets to our various zones, sprinklers, drip line, etc. Now you'll notice on a 24 volt solenoid valve, you'll have two red wires. Um, these two red wires are not polarity dependent, so it doesn't matter which one you wire. There will be a common and then a trigger wire. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll just show you how that's connected into the multi-core cable. I just happen to have some multi-core cable here, and this is a six-core cable. So if we separate all the cores out, make sure you don't use the filler core. So you've got the cables there. Now, what you want to do for how however many solenoid valves you're doing you want to select a common color and that's usually for me will be the black one because it's easy to remember and then we have a trigger wire so we'll have number one valve will be red number two valve will be green and what I do is I fold those over and secure them don't cut them off but you may need to seal with insulation tape the cable here depending on where you've got if your valves are higher there is a tendency for the water to creep down here so you always seal those off now you mustn't connect an underground uh, valve or, or any valve for example that's going to be outside with anything other than these special grease filled crimp connectors very easy to use but once they're used once they're they're sealed in uh, silicon grease actually fills any uh, gap in there and make sure no water can penetrate so it can be uh, underwater quite safely uh, and in an outside chamber an underground chamber there is a danger of it filling with water so uh, just be very careful you do the connection correctly now I've got two solenoids here but if you've got more than two solenoids you just take one wire from each of the solenoids and link them together as a common so I've got two here so I'll just take my two wires from one from each of my solenoids. Now when these, uh, when you connect it into these grease crimps, they've got a translucent back so you can see that the cable's gone fully in. And don't forget to connect it to your common multi-core cable wire, which in our case is black, and then crimp it down. Now this is most important, most important that you crimp this properly with a decent pair of pliers and you can actually see there my cables all nicely crimped together. You don't need to bear any of the wires, just leave them with the insulation on and that will be a nice tight waterproof connection. The other two are our trigger wires and they're treated slightly different. So in my case this is going to be my number one valve which I'm going to connect to, number, uh, to the red wire and this is my number two valve which I'm going to connect to the yellow. So obviously you take the other wire from the chosen solenoid which is this one here and again, you connect in to a grease crimp. And these are very clever, these grease crimps, in the fact that they're very quick to do once you get going. And you can see what you're doing. Again, make sure that seal that uh, is crimped well down so the sealing silicon grease uh, can actually do its job. And my second solenoid, make sure it fully goes in. And then crimp that up. And that's it. Very, very simply, very watertight connection. What I normally do once I've tested it and it works, um, I always 
bundle these wires together and just put a little ratchet strap around them to, to neaten them up. Don't cut the wires back because in future if you ever want to get the wire, uh, get the solenoids changed or, or move them in and out of the chamber uh, you, you'll be glad of that extra bit of cable. So we've wired our solenoid valve, which can be some distance away from the controller. What do we do now? Well, we take the other end of our signal cable, the, the uh, cable that we've wired into our solenoid valves, and we're going to wire it now into the controller. So this can be wired to any of our mains powered controllers. We'll connect it into the Hunter X core. Uh, so we need to remove the connection cover to start with, uh, and then you'll see inside here where the valves go. You've got a common feed in and then our trigger wires for our four valves, in our case only two. So what you do is you take the ends of the cable, strip it down and then select the cables that you used and if you remember we've used the red, the yellow and the black cable so put the others to one side. So you need to route the cable into the controller and make sure you do that via a proper weatherproof gland because you don't want to in, uh, increase the chances of any damp getting into your controller. So there we are, there's our cable into our controller. Okay, we've got our three wires. If you remember, we used the black as our common, the red as number one solenoid and the yellow as number two solenoid. So we connect those to the corresponding points. And if you look along here, you see the C position. So that's where our common goes. So we just pop that in like so. Make sure you get these nice and tight. You do need to bear the wires back slightly, not too much though, because you don't want them shorting. And there's our number one, which is red. So you pop that in. And time it up. And our number two, which is yellow. And so do the same there and pop that in as well. Make sure they're tight and they're okay and make sure you've curled the other wires out of the way and then you can just pop that back into there like so. And that's it. Just make sure all the wires are well put into the terminal strips. Make sure you tighten the cable gland up uh, and job done. Now remember me mentioning about the rain sensor input on this controller or on any of the controllers. That goes into, on this controller, this here, and there's a bridging piece of metal that goes across. Remove that, route the cable through, uh, and then connect into there. Very, very simple, and the controller will recognize it uh, straight away. Once you've done that, then it's safe to turn the power supply on if you've uh, connected up already, or it's now safe to connect your wires for your power supply into the controller. Make sure all the connections are nice and tight, make sure everything's done, uh, and then program it up. <laughs>